Sometimes when you're looking at an underbrushing job, actually most times, it's going to be very thick, very overgrown, and you're not going to be able to walk through all of it to check it out up close and personal. These are areas that can be done with a forestry mulcher or a brush hog, areas that they just want thinned out that they can reuse on their property. But for you to get in there with a measuring wheel and figure out how big this area is and calculate it for an estimate, it's going to be nearly impossible sometimes. So there is a tool that I like to use to calculate these areas. It at least gives the customer a ballpark of how big the area is, and you can then use that as a baseline to figure out roughly how long it's going to take you. Obviously, you can't get in there and see if there are stumps, rocks, tires, different debris, different obstacles, but it will give you a ballpark of how big the area is, and you'll get a feel for how long this should take you with some other variables in there to consider as well. My name is Chad. This is Excavation Revelation, where excavating strategies are revealed. Let's take a look today about how do you calculate an area when it's overgrown, you can't walk through it. Google Earth is a great app to download. It can be found in the Google Play Store. The icon is just going to say Earth, like you see on the left. It's a blue ball. Once you get it all downloaded, ready to go, click on it to open it up. I was just then, but usually it'll say Google Earth. It'll do a little intro as you open it up. You can then have a satellite image, bird's eye view of what project you want to look at. Pinch and pull the screen to get the area in the focus that you're looking at. And you'll see at the upper left hand part, I'm sorry, upper right hand part of your screen, you'll see a ruler icon. That is your measuring tool. To start measuring, simply click on it and a crosshair will appear on your screen. Pinch and drag your screen over to where you want to start recording. Then at the bottom center, you'll see there, add point. And it will basically kind of drop a pin. You then start dragging your screen and you'll start, see it start to measure. Measuring is all well and good, but we're interested in the perimeter right now. So we're just going to pay more attention to that. Hit add point again to record your next corner. And keep repeating this process. Now, as you can notice, it's going to draw a straight line. So if you have to go around a bend or something sharp, you just have to do little short straight points to get the contour that you want to follow. Otherwise, it's just going to cut straight across, save for like this, and you're going to miss out. If this does happen and you want to go back, at the top right, there is a blue arrow pointing to the left. It's your eraser. Click on it. It will erase that last recorded point that you just had. You can go back as many times as you need to to fix your error. Just keep going around your perimeter. Do the best you can from what you can see to figure out the boundary. The homeowner can also do this if they like, if they feel that they've got a better idea of the area. They can map it out for you, or you can just do this and show it to them and have them say yay or nay. I think there's a mound there. We'll just go this way. If that's accurate or not, and you'll at least be able to then have an acreage calculated that you can both agree on. It may not be 100% accurate, Depending on once you get in there, you see some different obstacles or different things, but it will give you a very good ballpark to start crunching your numbers to figure out how long it's going to take you and how much it's going to cost them to do this project. The cool thing about this is that once you get back to your starting point, as soon as you get near it, it's going to highlight it. And your option is then going to change from add point to close shape. By clicking on that, it will then highlight your area and give you your numbers. We can now see that our perimeter is 1,763 feet, which doesn't really help us a whole lot. 
except if we're walking this, we know how far we walked. But the main thing we're looking at here is that next number below it, the acreage, 3.31 acres, as you can see in the bottom left hand of your screen. That is how big this area is to be underbrushed. Where it says area in the bottom left hand of your screen, if you click on it, you can change, if you want to change it to square feet, square yards, it gives you some different options there. Acres usually works best, so I keep it on that. But that will give you an acreage calculation of the area. Now keep in mind, this is a bird's eye view. It's straight down, so you're not going to be able to see any humps or bumps or the steepness of this. But you can kind of get a perspective. If you look at the right hand side of your screen where it says 3D, if you click on 3D, it will drop it, the screenshot down. It'll give you kind of like a drone perspective, a lot close to the ground, and it's going to go around and spin around your area to give you that perspective. So I'm going to click on that button now to show you. Now, I'm not even touching anything, and it's going around on its own. We can see there already that there's a hump just outside that area, toward that area of dirt. On the upper side, toward that housing complex, there's a steep hill that goes up. But the area that we're looking to work on seems pretty flat for the most part. But that will give you a perspective of what the ground's going to look like. I can zoom in here a little bit to see. Yeah, it looks like there's a mound here to the right. How do I get that box off the screen? And it's definitely steeper up here to the left. It just gives you a rough idea. Now, as I'm going about this, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, that's all well and good, but how do we know it's accurate? Well, if we flip back to our bird's eye view here, zoom out, we can go to something nearby that we can double check on. So this, for example, is close to Penn State University. Beaver Stadium just happens to be right here. Penn State. We can then measure this football field to check our calibration. So to get out of your previous recording, it's going to keep it highlighted, but it'll, it'll take this box off the screen. In the upper left, hit that arrow where it says measure, hit that arrow. I probably should have done that when we did the 3D view, but either way. Click on your measuring ruler again in the upper right to get your crosshair back. If we just go over here to the goal line, we'll just zoom in. Get it on the goal line, hit add point. We all know that a football field is 100 yards or 300 feet. So if we just come up the sideline here, 20, 10, and get to the other goal line. It will tell us 300 feet. So this is very accurate and we can assume that when they made this same that they made it accurate too. So both factors check out. If you then want to go around and calculate the area, you can, but we know that it is definitely measuring a straight line. It is very accurate. Now your job site, for example, it might not be as flat as Penn State's field. If you'll keep that in mind, it's going to vary a little bit. But if you do that 3D imagery, like I showed you a minute ago, it will give you a better feel for the lay of the land. So our project... Oh, so it did not save our project that was highlighted. But either way, it's right here. Again, if we hit that 3D view, you can see it better now. It'll show you some contours a little bit more, a little bit better. Google Earth is just a great tool to use for some areas that are super thick that you don't want to go in. You'll get all cut up. 
It's just an easy way to measure an area or even an area that you did that you want to look back on to just to see how accurate you were with your size, your calculations, without having to go out there with a measuring wheel to measure it. This is a great tool to use and I highly recommend it.